In this video, we are going to explore what it means to have the power of the .NET ecosystem at your side when you are making Blazor applications. We are going to install two Nugget packages in order to resolve two business scenarios that we have for our application. We remember that we did a people application in which we can create, update, delete, and read people data from our database. Now we have two new requirements. The first one is to be able to export those records from the database into a CSV. And after that, we are going to have to use Markdown so that we can enter people's biography with a styling. So let's start with the CSV case. What we need to do first is to install a Nugget package that is going to help us to export the people information into a CSV file. For that, we are going to come here to our client project. We are going to right click it. Let's click on manage Nugget packages and let's install a package called CSV helper. Let's click on it and let's click on install. I accept. And if we compile our application, we are going to see that we have succeeded. Now it is important to realize that this is a Nugget package that we are going to use on the user's browser. This means that we are not limited to using JavaScript libraries, but that we can also use Nugget packages in the user's browser. So now let's use CSV helper in our application. Let's expand this and let's go to pages, people, index, and here down below the table, we are going to place a button that will allow people to export as CSV data. Let's use a on click handle to execute a method when users presses this button. The method will be called export as CSV. Now let's go down here and let's make a private void export as CSV method. And now what we are going to do is that we are going to take this people array and we are going to save its information into a CSV file. And we are going to send that files to the user's computer. So for that, we're going to use a memory stream. We're going to say memory stream. We need to import system.io in order to use memory stream. So we are going to say using system.io. And now we have access to the memory stream. Now we need a writer. So we're going to say writer, new stream writer. And we're going to pass it the memory stream. Finally, we need a CSV writer. So we're going to say CSV new CSV writer, which comes from CSV helper, CSV writer. And we're going to pass it the stream writer that we just created. And here we're going to say CSV write records, and we can pass it an array of values. And in this case, we're going to pass it our people array. Now down here, we're going to create a byte array, which is going to represent the content of our CSV file. And now we have to send this file to the user's computer. But how can we do that? We're going to use the old trick of creating an anchor tag and clicking on it so that the files gets downloaded into the user's computer. For that, we're going to need to use JavaScript. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create a JavaScript file which is going to handle the operation of creating the anchor tag and clicking on it in order to download a file. So for that, we can come here to the www root directory and we're going to create a folder. We're going to call it JS and here we can create a JavaScript file. We're going to say new item. Let's look for JavaScript, JavaScript file. And we are just going to call it helpers. In this helpers.js, we are going to paste this function. This function called save as file, what it does is to create an anchor element. It appends the link, it clicks on it, and then it removes the link. This is an old trick to trigger a download of a file from JavaScript. Now we need to call this save as file function from our application. For that, we are going to create a extension method of IJS runtime so that we encapsulate this operation into a class. So now let's create a new folder here at the top level of our project 
and it is going to be called helpers. And now let's create a class here. We will call it IJS runtime extensions. It is going to be an extension method of IJS runtime, which means that we have to make this class static. And now let's create a static method, which is going to return value task of object. We remember that since preview nine of .NET Core 3, we have to return value task from invoke async of IJS runtime. The name of this method is going to be save us and we're going to extend IJS runtime. Let's bring the corresponding namespace. We're going to have a file name parameter here and a byte array, which is going to represent the content of the file. Now here we're going to say return JS, but we're going to use the invoke void async method, which returns a value task, which means that we don't have to use object here. And now we are going to execute this function that we have here. So we're going to copy its name and we're going to paste it here. As parameters, we're going to pass the file name and we're going to convert to base 64 the contents of our byte array. And that's it for this class. Now, finally, we need to be able to access this helpers JS from our application, which means that we have to come here to the index.html so that we can download that JS file. So here we're going to say a script JS helpers. And now we're ready to go. Now we can go back here to the index.racer and we can use from here the IJS runtime because we are already injecting it here, but we're going to need to use the IJS runtime extensions class. So what we're going to do is that we're going to copy this. And since we want to have access to all the types within this namespace, we're going to use our imports file. We're going to say using this. And now when I come back here and I come back to our method, to our export a CSV method, I can say JS save us and I can choose a file name. I'm just going to choose people.csv and I'm going to pass the byte array. And that's it. If I press control F5 in order to run our application, we're going to see our application here. We can go to people and we will have a Spora CSV button here. And if we click it, the people.csv file is going to be downloaded. And if we open it, we will see that we have ID and name, and we have our two records from the database, which are these exact records that we have here. As we said, there is another requirement besides exporting this data as CSV. And it is that we want to have our users to have the ability of going here and being able to enter the biography of the person, but as markdown. So we have to allow the user to enter the biography of the person as markdown, and we have to render that markdown for the user in order for them to see the final result. So how can we do that? Well, again, we can leverage the power of the .NET ecosystem in order to use a NuGet package that parses markdown content and translate it to HTML. So let's do that. Let's go back here to Visual Studio and let's go back to manage NuGet packages. And now we're going to install another package, which is called markd. Let's click on here and let's click on install. Let's compile our application and we will see that we have the build succeeded. Now I want to encapsulate the functionality of displaying the content of a markdown as HTML in a component. And because this component can be used from anywhere, I am going to choose to put it on the share folder. So we're going to come here. Let's click on add new item. Let's go here, raise our component. And I'm going to call it display markdown. And here we can do the following. We can bring the markdict namespace. We're going to need at least one parameter, which is going to be the markdown content. For that, we're going to make this public property which is going to be called markdown content. And we're going to make a private field, which is going to be called HTML content, which represents the parsing of the markdown content. Now we're going to have to override the on parameter set method. 
which is going to be run every time this parameter is updated. Now let's say on parameter set, and I will say if markdown content is different than null, then HTML content is going to be equal to markdown dot, and here we're using the nugget package to HTML. We're going to parse the markdown content to HTML and let's pass markdown content as a parameter. Now here, we're going to say if a string is null or empty, HTML content, if there is nothing to show, we are just going to say loading, but if there is content, then we want to display the HTML code. And for that, we have to cast it as markup string HTML content. And that's it. Now we need to allow the user to enter markdown content as a field of the person entity. For that, we're going to go to the share folder. We're going to create a new property, which is going to be called biography. And now we're going to add a migration. Add migration. I'm going to call it person biography. Now let's say update database in order to send this new field to the database. And that is done. Now I can go back to the person form, which is here, person form, and we can include a new field here. And by the way, this should be form group. This also should be form group. And let's say biography. Now, what I like to do in this scenario is to have on the left, the markdown content and on the right, a preview of the markdown content. For that, we're going to change this. Instead of using input text, we're going to use input text area and the bind value is going to be biography. And let's say biography here too. And I am going to need to enclose this on a diff because I am going to use flexbox to have them side by side. Now we're going to say here biography two, but this is going to be a preview, a preview of the markdown content. And I'm going to say here class markdown container and we're going to say display markdown and the markdown content is going to be the person biography now as we said we need to use flexbox in order to have these two div side by side for that we're going to make a class called form markdown container now let's go to our css file which is here in www root site css and let's go down below here and let's paste this code. As you can see, we're using Flexbox. We're defining the width and height of the text area and a margin. And for the markdown container, we're using a border and also defining its dimensions. Now we should be ready to run our application and see our markdown in action. Let's go to the people component. Let's go to edit. And if we write something here like Felipe's biography and we click outside of the element, we're going to have this content here at this right, which is going to be the preview of the markdown that we are writing. And as you can see, everything that we write here on the left, it is going to be previewed on the right. Now we can save this. We can say edit person. And if we go to edit, we are going to have the same information here. We can see that this person doesn't have that information, but Felipe has it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.